take your life back. Take your life back. Good morning. My name is Raoul Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about something that's a little different. Uh, there are actually two things. The one subject that I want to touch, like we touch subjects all the time during my shows. These are seven reasons why being sober can make you look good and make you look and feel sexy. But I also want to talk about something. Um, I had received a book. Um, maybe last year sometime from a friend of mine, a co-worker, and it is by Joel Osteen, and it's called, I'm going to hold it up, it's called, I Declare 
31 promises to speak over your life. Now for the 30, next 31 shows that I do do, I'd like to read one particular uh, for day one all the way to 31. And that's, uh, we're going to call this not uh, days, but shows. These are going to be 31 shows, uh, promises to speak of uh, for the next 31 shows. Let me read this directly. I declare God's incredible blessings over my life and over your life. I will see an explosion of God's goodness, a sudden widespread uh, increase. I will experience the surpassing greatness of God's favor. It will elevate me to the higher level than I ever dreamed of. Explosive blessings are coming my way. This is my declaration for day one slash show one. Again, we're going to be doing this for the next 31 shows. For every show, I'm going to have a new declaration. And this comes directly from Joel Oldstein. I declare 31 promises to speak of over my life. These are going to be 31 promises I speak of over the next 31 shows. And I'll read it one more time. I declare God's incredible blessings over my life. I will see an explosion of God's goodness, a sudden widespread increase. I will experience the surpassing greatness of God's favor. It will elevate me to a level higher than I ever dreamed of. Explosive blessings are coming my way. This is my declaration for show number one, for day number one. As always, I want to give a shout out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez from Starting Point. You can call him at 844-414. 8444. You can also find him at www.startingpointmn.com. That's S T A R T T I N G P O I N T M N.com. He has two entities to his business. The first one is to walk with you from your addiction to your recovery, hand by hand, 24 hours at a time, never looking back to the past. He is not a counselor, he's not a therapist. What he is, like me, an addiction recovery coach. We are here to help you every day during your battle with addiction, to walk with you, to talk to you, to bring out answers that you already have inside you to the surface for you to move on, to have a positive outlook for the future. On the other side of his business, he has where he can make you, like me, which he has done for me, made me into a recovery coach. If you have passion, professionalism, personality, and you have some sort of addiction background, whether it's your own or someone in your immediate or uh, outer family, he can help you with his educational program, make you an addiction recovery coach. Again, call him at 844-414-8444. That's Dr. Luis Gonzalez. My particular websites, I have a website that uh, purely gives you information on addiction and recovery. That website is called clearviews.info. That's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S-I-N-F-O. There's a dot in between clear views and info. On there, you'll find I have, yes, now reached over 200 videos. Yay! 203 videos, you can see, of just about every topic you can imagine. Topics like today. Seven reasons why being sober can make you look good and feel sexy and look sexy. These are all topics for you to educate yourself on addiction and recovery. There are articles, there are uh, clippings, all by doctors, uh, uh, psychologists, and psychiatrists. They have written these. I merely put them on my website for you to see. My videos come from me. I produce my, I mean, I make my videos with my producer, Catherine Friedrichs, which is my wife. And we do this um, each and every uh, day, except for on Thursdays, uh, where we have throwback Thursdays. We do need a day off, too. Because uh, there is a lot of time involved in making these videos. It, there's at least two, three hours preparation prior, about an hour to do, and two, three hours after. So there's a lot of preparation, but we do it all for you. And when I do for you, I do for me. This is my own way of recovering daily. And we'll talk about different recovery methods. But let's jump right into, oh, let me mention my other website. It is clearreform.com, like Dr. Luis Gonzalez at Starting Point. I also will walk with you hand in hand from your uh, addiction to your recovery. I am also not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a counselor, but I am as an addiction recovery coach. I will help you walk daily. Um, each and every facet of your recovery will be walked with me 
with uh, some sort of plan for today not for yesterday because yesterday is gone for today only but reach out to me at clear reform that's c-l-e-a-r-r-e-f-o-r-m dot com if you need to talk to me call me 844-405-HELP and if you want to text me 24-7 it's 631-599-0218 seven reasons why being sober can make you look good feel and look sexy what does it mean to be sexy in today's world where every picture is edited and every model is photoshopped it can be easy to lose perspective on what sexy or attractive qualities are being sexy can mean a lot of different things and sober people have lots of sexy qualities yes even you we always make sure we point out the that recovery is more than just drinking or drugging because let's let always look at the negative things of recovery let's look at the positive things you look good when you're sober you feel good when you're sober and you look damn sexy we want people to enjoy their lives we feel good about themselves and and uh, no we want you to feel good about yourselves and we want you to be happy and healthy recovery is about living here is why being sober will make you look good and feel and look sexy. Number one, you look damn good. When you give up the booze and drugs, the first thing you get back is your physical health. Your body weight will regulate, your skin will look better, and your eyes will have a life in them. You will look so damn good, you'll be sparkling, folks. And I definitely can attest to this because when I was drinking a lot, people could tell. My eyes were droopy, watery, my skin was flush, I, I dragged my body around like a bag of potatoes, but since giving, uh, since becoming sober, I have uh, almost like a flower that received water blossomed. Number two, you will actually have some money. I don't know how that makes you feel sexy, but let's find out. Let's be honest, being financially stable is important, of course it is. Now that you have stopped spending every dollar, quarter and penny on dope, which I was kidding about that, you have some extra cash in your pocket. And it's not just dope, it could be alcohol also. With some time in recovery, you will learn how to manage your money. With all that money you are saving, you have built up a savings account. You have money to go on trips. You can afford a new car and look at you go. You're sitting on the money. You're not putting it into your body that's hurting your body anyway. Number three, you are one tough SOB. They say your struggles develop your strengths. If suffering builds strength, then people who have experienced addiction have preserved are among the toughest there are. What could possibly ever happen to us that is harder than getting and staying sober? There really isn't anything because that in itself, it's such a hard mission that a lot of people, including myself, six, seven times, fail in the beginning we relapse any little stress any little trigger makes us go back into the drugs and alcohol so when you have successfully let's say hypothetically gone past a month congratulations me i have reached a year and a half now i have a friend who's reached 35 years we all are in different stages in our sobriety the end result is the most important that's to stay sober mental strength and dealing with pain is something that we are good at our past and our struggles become the foundation for us to build on folks that is so true I build on my past mistakes I build if I didn't have those past mistakes I wouldn't know how to be a stronger me that is what they're talking about number four you are totally comfortable just being yourself isn't this why we would be uh, excuse me isn't this why we would use this in the first place we were uncomfortable we had to fill the void and we wanted to fit in we don't live that way anymore with some work and some self-reflection sober people learn who they are and learn to love themselves there is something very sexy about a man or a woman who knows who you are who doesn't have to prove anything to anyone and is comfortable in their own skin being comfortable leaves you feel confident in yourself that in itself folks is sexy number five you are understanding compassion and you help people that is so important we will talk about that later but i talk about it every show we as humans need to learn to help each other we really do some people are jerks but not you 
The people I have met in recovery are, without doubt, the most considerate, understanding, helpful, most willing to listen people that I have ever met because they feel clear. We use our past and our hardship to help other people. And that is true. Our lessons. See, this is why I called my method, my websites, they all start with the word clear. This is the perfect example. We use our past and our hardships to help other people. Community lessons empower addiction recovery. That is clearviews.info and clear reform. When people are willing to sacrifice their time for the sake of helping other people, that is just awesome. And believe me, the Lord Jesus will see that. And you, if you already have a low self-esteem, that will build up your self-esteem. It will bring it right to the surface. Number six, because you're not drunk. We would never say there is anything wrong with alcohol. If you choose to drink, that's fine, and you have uh, every right to do so. Uh, you know, I always say this, and as an alcoholic, it's really hard for me to say this, but it's so true because you have to be realistic. There are people that can socially have alcohol and not be affected by it. I don't condone drugs at all, but when it comes to alcohol, there are people that can handle their booze. I will never tell a person you should not drink if you can handle it. It is people like me that have the addictive personality that if you have one or two, it just spirals out of control. That is why I cannot have any alcohol. We are just saying that Maybe being loaded isn't as hot and as cool as we once thought it was. It feels good not to be the guy passed out on the floor or the guy talking nonsense in the corner. Number seven, you just all around have yourself together. You are a, a well-balanced human when you're sober. What could possibly be sexier than a man or a woman who has their life together? You're sober, confident, and stable. You show up on time and you are responsible. You admit your mistakes and every day you are trying to be a better person. You help people and not, and you're not too proud to ask for help yourself. A class act you are, you got sober, you are a survivor, you learned from your past and you have turned it into your strength. You should be very proud of yourself. We are proud of you. Stay sober, stay sexy and look damn good. And you know what? That last sentence, you have learned from your past and you have uh, turned it around to use as your strength all the mistakes and the uh, alcoholic days and your drug days they look so bleak and they certainly were until you hit rock bottom and you have turned that completely around to become your strength if you would have asked me two years ago if I would have had my own show and been able to sit in front of a camera and tell you guys how I feel better not drinking, I would have said you're crazy. I won't even do it one time. I have learned my past mistakes, my past life, and I have turned it into my strength. I am so strong with these shows, my websites, my social networking to help others because it helps me, folks. As selfish as it may sound, I'm doing this more for me than for you. But on the other hand, I know that when I do it for me, it's helping you. It is our community lessons that empower addiction recovery. It is our community. You are part of my community. I'm part of yours. Every time I get in front of the camera, it ignites the thoughts of my past that I do not ever want to face again. Those are demons from the past. And like I read for day one, which is show one from this book, I declare God's incredible blessings over my life. I will see an explosion of God's goodness, a sudden widespread increase. I will experience the surpassing greatness of God's favor. It will elevate me to a higher level than I've ever dreamed of. Explosive blessings are coming my way. This is my declaration. And what I read is also for you. We will do... 31 shows coming up with 31 declarations. That was declaration number one. Turn your past into your strength.
Turn your mistakes into something positive. Turn yourself into something brand new. No matter how bad your drugs and your alcohol addiction might be today, November 4th, it doesn't matter because today is a new day. Yesterday is gone. We all have chapters in our book of life. Every person's chapter starts at birth and every person's book ends at death. It is what's in between birth and death which is important. But, let's say if you're like me, I'm in my 53rd chapter, 53 years old, and let's just say if my 52 chapters were the most terrible things, I'm not saying it's great to have that pass. What I am saying is you can still change it because you are still alive to have that opportunity to change. Change it today. Make your book a whole different book with new chapters in your life. And we'll talk about how changing that. But those chapters should always include being a good role model for your children and your grandchildren. When you are around your grandchildren and your children, there are certain things you should be doing and there are certain things that you should never be doing. There are four particular things that I'm going to mention in this show that you should never, ever do in front of your children or your grandchildren. You should never smoke in front of your children or your grandchildren. And the reason for that is because what you do in front of your children they will think it's okay. Remember, your children look at you as their hero and a role model. So how could you sit there and smoke in front of your children and then tell them not to? Because when you do it, they think it's okay. That's number one. Number two, you should never ever drink or do drugs in front of your children. Never ever. Again, for the same reasons. They have the mentality of monkey see, monkey too. Number three, you should never ever use profanity. Ever use profanity in front of your children. They are uh, like little magnets. They, I mean, they'll just absorb it. It just sticks to them. Whatever you say, and they will utilize those words at home, at school, wherever they might be. And God forbid you physically abuse anyone, whether it's in your home or not, you should never ever do that. If you have an anger issue, seek therapy, seek counseling. And if you're watching me or listening, you're the victim of physical violence or domestic abuse, you should call 911 immediately. I always say this, and I say this sincerely and from my heart, it is better to have your loved one taken out in handcuffs somewhere, seek treatment for a week or two, and then come back to you one day a better person. Then, for 911 to be called to come to your home to take you out in the body bag, because that is irreversible. You are now gone. You will not be writing any further chapters in your book of life, but a chapter that will be included for your loved one is, I killed my spouse, I killed my partner. Those are four things you should never, ever do, ever, in front of your children. And what are the action plans to prevent all these four things? Well, if you have to smoke, do it outside your home. If you have to drink, for whatever reason, do it outside your home. If you have to use profanity, do that outside your home. And if you have to use physical violence, go see counseling or therapy. These are four things that you need, and I repeat, you need to do in your home, in front of your children. You need to show your children or your grandchildren that there is love in, in the home. You have to show them that. You have to show your children, number two, that there is compassion in your home. More importantly than anything else other than love, you have to show respect to your children and your grandchildren because when you give respect, you get respect. And you have to be emotional in front of your children. It is okay for you as the leader, as the role model, even as an adult, to cry with your children. It only shows to your children that you are human. Monkey see, monkey do. 
if they see the respect, the love, the compassion, and the emotions, they, we, will be prepared for society. I am not saying for one minute that you can prepare your children for 100% protection from the evils of society. What I am saying is you need to help write the chapters between zero, their birth, and 18, 18 chapters. You need to be co-author of those chapters and do whatever it takes to make those chapters good, productive chapters. While you're writing your own chapters, you need to help them. Now, let's just say today, November 4th, 2014, the chapters before today on your book of life have all been less than desirable. Start today changing them. If you have alcohol issues, you can change. If you have drug issues, you can change. What about all the chapters before then? It doesn't matter. It's finished. What about people telling me, oh, uh, you're no good. You're worth nothing. Do not listen. You are a special person the way you are. God created you. You have just gone with the fork of the road where there's recovery and addiction. You have gone towards the addiction side. However, walk back to where the fork starts and go towards the recovery. Today, you can rewrite the chapters or write new chapters in your book of life. If you're willing and able to start again, to start looking good, to start reaching out to God, two things you have to do today. You have to admit you don't, I mean, that you do have a problem. Because the, every time you say you don't have a problem is every time you're not ready. You know you have a problem if your life is crumbling around you. If things are just falling to pieces, if people are saying that you're no good, you know you have a problem with alcohol and or drugs. Admit you have a problem. And number two is to reach to your higher power. In my case, my God. It reached to your higher power. Ask God for guidance and direction because you would definitely need his guidance and direction. Otherwise, your life wouldn't be crumbling the way it is right now. Every show, we're going to do these declarations. Today, you should say, I declare God's incredible blessings over my life, over your life. I declare that for you. But start today. And when you have declared nothing but blessings over your life from God and you have finally admit you have a problem let's look at different ways to solve your problem when I say solve if you have an addiction you will always have an addiction but when I say solve is to live with your addiction AA is one way you have AA and NA depending on alcohol and drug abuse they are great at what they do you show up for an hour, hour and a half every time you go. They've been around since 36. They've helped millions of people. You have my methods, which are a little different than theirs. and Not a little, but a lot of difference in theirs. And I'll explain to you the difference. I did go to AA, and I just felt that it wasn't enough. I am the type of person that the more I do, the better I become at what I do. I need to be actively involved in my recovery. And AA just was not giving me that. So I decided to create different ways of my own method. Ways like this video. Daily, four to seven hours, either directing, making, editing, talking about recovery. Chatting on the phone, uh, on, online with people about recovery. I read a couple things last night from people that sent me comments talking on the phone, uh, talking on the computer, getting emails, talking to people, interviewing people, working on my websites and my, my uh, articles. These are hands-on recovery methods. Not from a book, but when I roll my sleeves up, I dive into my own recovery methods. That is my method. So you have AA, you have my method. You have treatment centers. Treatment centers are great. They have the 30, 60, 90 day programs. You go in there, you're supervised 24 seven, and then you come out. AA, my method, treatment center, or whatever other method, seeks one goal 
and that is 100% sobriety from drugs and or alcohol. But no matter what method you do, never ever think that you are healed. What you are going through is daily learning, educating yourself on how to live with your addiction. Your addiction, the minute you put your guard down, will succumb you, overtake you, and suck you back in. That's why educating yourself and continuously going to meetings and continuously doing my methods or whatever refreshes your memory on who you used to be. If you include God and educating yourself daily, you are protected 100% from addiction. But the minute you eliminate one or both, things will go back to the way they used to be. If I didn't do these shows, and if I didn't talk about my addiction to other people globally that I do, if I just sat in a corner and said, yeah, I'm okay, and I suddenly stopped communicating with my Lord, my life will go right back to the way it used to be. It would crumble. So will yours. You need to educate yourself daily with some sort of recovery plan. You need to include God daily. And even if you're watching me and you don't have an addiction issue, God should be included in your daily life anyway. Anyway, remember the declaration that I read. That is so important. This is declaration for show number one. I declare incredible blessings over my life. I will see an explosion of God's goodness, a sudden widespread increase. I will experience the surpassing greatness of God's favor. I will elevate me to a higher level than I've ever seen before. Explosive blessings are coming my way. This is uh, my declaration, and this comes directly from Joel Osteen. It is important that you include God. You will see so many differences in your life. When you eliminate your addiction or your consumption of alcohol and drugs and you include God, like I told you about how you're going to look, you're going to see changes physically, you're going to see changes mentally, financially, and spiritually. You are now transforming into a whole new well-balanced human. A year ago, you might have been laying in a ditch as an alcoholic or a drug abuser thinking your whole world is coming to an end, looking like God knows what, feeling like God knows what, stealing possibly. And you made that decision to seek help, and you made the decision to seek God. A year later, you can look like a brand new blossom flower that was watered daily. But it's up to you. Start writing new chapters in your book of life today, November 4th, 2014. Include those chapters to have things like God's in my life. Alcohol is gone from my life. Drugs are gone from my life. Helping other people is included in my life. Being positive is included in my life. Negativity is gone. You get the message, but it all starts with you. These are seven reasons why being sober can make you look good and sexy. You look damn good when you give up the booze and the drugs. The first thing you get back is your physical health. Your body weight will regulate, your skin will look better, and your eyes will have life in them. Remember, people always say the eyes are... The windows to your soul. When somebody looks through your eyes while you're influenced, all they see in your soul is addiction. You still have the addiction even if you right now are in recovery. The difference is, is people can look through your eyes and not see addiction. What they see is a different person. You will look so damn good you'll be sparkling. You'll actually have money what you don't put in your mouth or in your arms is money going into the family, money going into a bank. Let's be honest, being financially stable is important. Now that you have stopped spending every dollar, quarter and penny on dope or alcohol, 
you will keep that cash in your bank or in your pocket. With some time in recovery, you will learn how to manage your money. With all that money you are saving, you have built up savings account. You are one tough person. You never realize how tough you are until you're committed on change. You are committed on change. You are one tough SOB. You are so comfortable being yourself suddenly. I am not the best looking person in the world. I am, I don't have the six pack stomach, but I am very pleased on my looks. I am happy the way I am. God created you and me the way we are. But God did not create us to look any different than what we are by utilizing drugs and alcohol. That is created by ourselves. Now that you're sober, or you're seeking sobriety, you are going to look good and feel good about yourself. You'll become compassionate, understanding, and you will start helping other people. The people that you'll meet in recovery are without doubt the most understanding, helpful people because they know what it's like and they're also very clear-minded. Because you're not drunk or passed out in the corner or the babbling baboon at a party, you are looking and feeling good to yourself and to other people. You just all around have yourself together. What could possibly be sexier or better than a man or a woman who has their life together? You're sober, confident, and stable. You show up on time and you're responsible. You admit your mistakes and every day you're trying to be a better person. Excuse me one second. You help people that, and you're not too proud to ask for help. And here comes the one that I base clearviews.info and clear reform. The word clear. A class act. You are. You got sober. You're a survivor. You learned from your past and turned it around into your strength. You are part of my community and your lessons and my lessons empower addiction recovery together. We have done this together. We have turned ourselves around our weaknesses, our miserable lives and turned it into our strengths to create videos, to go out and interview, to create websites, to witness to other people not only about alcohol and drug abuse but also about the Lord Jesus Christ. These are seven reasons why you are going to look and feel better about yourself. But it all starts with you and it all starts in your home. You have the three methods that we spoke about. There are many other methods. You have about writing new chapters in the book of life, about being a good role model. Help people daily. Help them physically, help them mentally, help them with product, such as if you have extra food, share it. If you have extra money, share it. If you just took 10% of what you were spending on dope and alcohol and gave that to charity, you would be doing such a good deed. Besides giving to your church, which you should be doing anyway. Because no matter what, you're going to end up with at least 80% in your pocket every day extra. Because of the lack of alcohol and dope you're doing. But if you see a neighbor that needs help, help them. If you walk into a supermarket, open the door for someone. If you see a senior having a problem lifting bags, help them. If you see somebody that needs garbage to be taken out because they're so old they can't do it, help them. If you see garbage on the floor, pick it up. It all starts with you caring for others. Because when you care for others, you will feel good and that will bring your self-esteem straight up. It really will. It all starts with you. Remember, when you become sober from alcohol and or drugs, 
things will happen. Things like your body weight will regulate. Your skin will become better looking. There'll be color again. Your eyes, which are the windows to your soul, will have life in them. You'll be sparkling. Help other people. Help yourself. And you will see so many better and new things happening. Reach out to God each and every day. When you go to bed tonight, and I use this and I recently saw Denzel Washington also using this, so I'm sure other people have heard about it. We all take our shoes, our sneakers, or our slippers off at night. We usually put them at the bottom of the edge of our bed. So when we get up, we can get right back into them and continue our life. Tonight, folks, push them under your bed, halfway under your bed, almost arm's length under your bed. That way, tomorrow morning when you get up, you will have to go on your knees to retrieve them, to go and get them when you're on your knees and I beg of you to do this when you're on your knees thank God that he is giving you another day on this beautiful earth another day on this earth to help other people another day to continue fighting your addiction another day to be a good role model another day to love to respect because for every breath you take there is someone in your community whether it's local community or global community taking their last breath for every time you open and you close your eyes there's somebody closing their eyes for the last time and for those people if they didn't have a chance for change like you have right now because you're actually physically watching me so you have a chance for change before it's too late for those people it might have been too late don't let that happen to you if you have a drug or alcohol addiction change is here change is now and change is November 4th 2014 because you never know if there'll be a November 5th 2014 for any of us I may never ever do another video if I'm not here to do it you might not ever ever watch another one of my videos if you're not around to watch it that's why we need to act on this moment this day to make changes in our life we cannot say okay tomorrow because you are not guaranteed a tomorrow like those people that are taking their last breath right now aren't guaranteed or we're not guaranteed or closing our eyes for the last time they were never guaranteed thank God that you have another day on this earth every time you wake up thank God there are millions of people that don't have that opportunity anymore start being a good human to others and to yourself because when you're good to yourself you automatically become good to others if you don't feel good about yourself you'll never feel good about other people around you make changes around today do a whole 360 turn and you will see things happening tremendously as time goes on you'll walk with such pride eventually knowing that you are living uh, with uh, an addiction um, that is not beating you that you have chosen to take head on and you are defeating it each and every day and while you're doing that help others with the same issues help others with other issues reach up to God and ask for guidance and direction in your home each and every day let the sunshine come in each and every day and you will get nothing but positive results stay away from the negative people that tell you you're no good you're nobody you're terrible because it is not true folks I'm here to tell you that you are a good person that you are a human that is worth everything in the world God created you to be a perfect human we as humans sometimes veer off the path that God has meant for us 
but it is never too late to turn around if you seek the guidance of your Lord. If somebody tells you you're no good, you're worth nothing, ask God for forgiveness for them. Stay away from the negative people. Pull yourself up, stand straight up, and know that you are a soldier of God that will continuously fight your addiction. And you will win. The winning comes at the end. If you went sober for a year or two for the rest of your life, that is winning. Losing your addiction battle would be having a relapse. And I know this is a world that is not perfect because I had six or seven relapses before I finally hit rock bottom enough to realize that I could not regulate my own life that I needed to realize I had a problem and I needed God in my life. You will hopefully have either faced that already or will face it. Reach out to me. Go to my website www.clearviews.info C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O There is so many things on there. There is or there are over 200 videos so many different topics and if you want a topic that you have not seen text me 631-599-0218 I will make sure that our producer my wife Catherine Friedrichs gets that topic ready and I will do that show for you. 631-599-0218 text me or email me at clearreform at yahoo that's c-l-e-a-r-r-e-f-o-r-m at yahoo.com you can call me also at 844-405-HELP go to my other website if you want to get help with your addiction that is www.clearreform dot com c l e a r r e f o r m dot com i will walk with you from your addiction to your recovery daily we will walk together we will fight together we will win together if you want to get a particular show ask and you will receive let's do this together please also, if you want to become an addiction recovery coach, reach out to Dr. Luis Gonzalez at 844-414-8444 or go to his website, www.startingpointmn.com. The MN stands for Minnesota. Folks, this was a particular good show. I want you to remember that we will do the declarations by Joel Oldstein for the next 31 shows. Today was the first one and I'm going to read it for the last time and stay tuned for the next show where we'll read declaration number two. This is declaration number one. I declare God's incredible blessings over my life. Say this to yourself. I will see an explosion of God's goodness, a sudden widespread increase. I will experience the surpassing greatness of God's favor. I will elevate it will elevate me to a higher level than I've ever dreamed of. Explos explosive blessings are coming my way. This is my declaration. And like I said, we're going to go to number two on my next show. This was number one. Folks, let's all become soldiers on the war of addiction. Let's all become the children of God that we are by asking him for guidance and direction daily. Our lives would not have crumbled if we were able to handle it, so it is God that will help. God is on the sideline just waiting for you to reach up. It starts today, November 4th, 2014, and it continues from this point on. Folks, remember, a sober day will give you a better tomorrow. That I guarantee you. And remember, if you truly believe what I'm telling you in here, it will become clear wherever you might be. Let me, Ralph Friedrichs, help you take your life back. Have a sober day, and more importantly, have a sober week. And God take bless each and every one of you. Hello, folks. My name is Ralph Friedrichs. I just want to share my story uh, with um, 
my situation back in 1981 in the United States Marine Corps. I was sitting in a chapel during boot camp and a uh, chaplain tapped me on the shoulder and asked me to come into his quiet room. As I was walking into his quiet room, I had no idea what he wanted from me. It was then that uh, God was setting my life in motion. Uh, so the chaplain sat me down and he says, Ralph, I've noticed that you like to help people, you motivate people, you're always walking around with a smile. And I wanted to know, this is the chaplain saying this to me, I wanted to know, Ralph, would you like to uh, volunteer and become a lay leader? And of course, I had no idea what a lay leader was. Uh, so he explained to me what a lay leader was. It's somebody that is a liaison between the recruits and the chaplain. So when the recruits have issues, problems, or anything uh, like that, they go to the lay leader and, uh, I mean, excuse me, they go to the chaplain as the lay leader uh, to, to uh, let the chaplain know of the situations that are happening. It was then, in 1981, that God already had a plan for me and, and what when there from from that point on was that God realized that no matter how long it would take for me to achieve what God already knew what was going to happen to me he would let me go down into the worst extremes in life so from 1981 as a lay leader and I'm going to show you the medal now with a lay leader to front and the back this is the back of the medal and then the front looks like this so in 1981, at Par Paris Island, South Carolina, when I became a lay leader, God already had my life set in motion. But again, he wanted me to set my own course in life. So I went down the years and the course of my life and, and uh, did some of the worst things possible to my own body uh, through alcoholism. God already said to himself, well, I'm going to wait for Ralph to uh, get close to hitting rock bottom. So from 1981 until 2011, which is 30 years, God came to me again and he said, Ralph, are you ready to continue helping other people? That's when I um, formed Mastic Beach Outreach 2011. And what that was is for uh, older people and uh, mentally and physically challenged people that my wife and I would help them by giving them clothing, food, uh, possibly like in one case tires for someone's car and um, so God said okay he is getting better uh, but he's still not ready to do what I really wanted him to do so in 19 excuse me in 2011 I continued my alcoholism uh, to the point of 10 to 15 shots a day as time went further, two, two years down the road, it became worse and worse with my alcoholism. In 2013, God finally put his big hand on my head and says, are you ready now? That is when I hit rock bottom, June 22nd, 2013. I reached out and I finally admit that I had an alcohol problem. It was then when God lifted me up and, and set my life in motion for today, September 2nd, 2014. So from 2013 until 2014, I continue educating myself and you, others, through my websites, through my, uh, my uh, videos on how to battle with addiction. And God saw this and he said, he, he said to himself, Ralph is still continuing helping people. So in between 2013 and 2014, as, as time was going by and, and I proved to God that I was really reforming myself uh, that God uh, introduced me to uh, Dr. Luis Gonzalez. I had been toying with the idea of becoming a substance abuse counselor until I ran into uh, an article about recovery coaching. So I thought it was very ironic that God had planted Dr. Luis Gonzalez from starting point, that S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com, 844-414-844, into my life. Dr. Luis Gonzalez gave me the educational uh, programming to turn me into a recovery coach. So between while I was training for Dr. Luis Gonzalez to become a recovery coach and today my father comes from South Carolina to visit and we're looking at my shrine which my wife calls a shrine which is all my Marine Corps ribbons and medals and my father asked me, Ralph, what is this medal for? What is, what is this particular medal for? And I then 
said to myself, here's where it all came together. I finally realized what that medal stood for and how it influenced me in my life. It was back in 1981 that God knew already that I would eventually, towards the middle uh, or 60% uh, of my life, be out to help other people, to continuously help people, to motivate people, to coach people. So it was from 1981 to 2011 that I ran my life to the ragged ends, to the pit of the worst. And then from 2011 to 2013, even worse than that. And then June 22nd, 2013, finally helped myself up with the grace of God. And in 2014, became an addiction recovery coach. And all that epiphany came to me due to my father asked me what this stood for. This particular silver medal. When he asked me that, it all finally came together, that God had bigger and better plans for me. And this is what I'm telling you folks, there is a plan for you. No matter what the plan might be, you don't know what it is, but there is a plan for you. It's just a matter of you figuring it out. So why don't you let me help take your life back? Thank you, God bless you, and have a sober day. Take your life back. Good morning and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today is September 4th. It's about 3.30 in the morning. I just want to share with everyone something this morning. Uh, I saw a demonstration uh, maybe about a month ago in reference to our dark side and the power of prayer. If you continuously pray over and over and over again, things will eventually become clear. Although that a lot of times when we pray to God, we don't get answers right away. Uh, but if you continuously pray, over and over things become clear. So the demonstration involves this bottle and if you see the inside of this bottle is all dark liquid. That represents our dark side and this cap represents our limitations. So we as a human, which is the bottle, have limitations which is this cap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this bottle into the sink and we're going to do a demonstration. So let me put that there. I'm going to turn the camera around so that everybody can see it. And hopefully you folks can all see it now. Okay, so you see the bottle. I'm going to turn the water on. Okay, so now everything inside is dark, which represents our body and our inside. And what I'm going to do, and this clear water represents our prayer. So you see the continuous water running. I'm going to now, as the prayer uh, as we're praying, I'm going to lift our limitations, which is the cap. And we're going to slowly add our prayer to this. We all go through dark times. I mean, I've had some dark years. I just didn't understand everything that was happening. I'm going to admit it that I'm not a super patient person. I tend to want answers right away and know what's happening and when I, uh, what I can do to solve it. I don't like not being happy and confident about things. It's just not who I am. But when I get down, it takes a lot for me to get back up. If we pray for a sign, which is this, the water is prayer, but just give up because we feel like God's already heard our prayer and he knows what we need, but he hasn't answered. It's kind of like when we were kids in a toy store and we kept asking our mom and dad for toys, but we never got any results. Yeah, it never worked for me either, but you get what I mean. Anyway, that is exactly what's happened to me in the past years. I have prayed and prayed and prayed, but haven't really gotten any results. The answer I thought God would give me, uh, and especially in a time of, of frame, I thought my problems would be fixed, which was all before 2013. Then, in 2013, my cap of limitations was lifted. This is the cap, remember this now. was lifted off the bottle, which is my body. Here is where I will just show you how that worked for me. So basically we all have dark sides, which is what's in the bottle, was in the bottle. We are facing and we take the limitations off our mind, which was the cap I lifted. Don't limit what he can do because we have to just trust in the Lord. That sometimes even after we pray and we just give up. And it is often why we get defeated. However, even though nothing has really changed, we just keep praying. That's the prayer, the sign of the prayer, the flowing Lord. Just keep praying and never ever give up praying. And if we do that and devote ourselves completely to the Lord, He will pull us through. The dark times will go away and we just have to be patient. I know it's hard. Being patient truly is a virtue. But by never ever giving up on prayer, it's going to show you that God will eventually answer all your prayer. 
And the more we pray, which is this water going into the bottle, one day everything will become clear. You see how clear this is now? That is the power of prayer. Folks, I think that demonstration says it all. If we had a bottle which represents our body and the bottle, uh, everything was dark on the inside. And the water coming out of the faucet represents the prayer day after day after day. Just keeps adding to the darkness which was in the bottle. Eventually all that prayer has to turn what was dark inside this bottle which is our body has to change and become as clear as this water in here that folks is Make the power your life of back. prayer Created using Powtoon.